as time continues to go by, my belief that Governor Kawira Mwangaza will survive the impeachment trial also continues to grow. And there's a number of reasons why I am stating that. And in this video, I would like us to go through them. But before we proceed, if you're here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button so that when we do videos like this, you get a notification. Now, as we speak, over 90,000 signatures have been collected from Meru County. These signatures demand that the president should dissolve the county assembly. Now, here's what the law says about that. The law provides that such a push needs to be backed by at least 10% of registered voters in the county. Now, currently, there are 780,000 registered voters in Meru County, so they only need 78,000 to meet the threshold. And as we speak, they are at uh, 90,000. And they are talking of going all the way to 400,000, especially with this second impeachment having taken place. Then Article 192 of the Constitution, which makes me remember that I have lost my copy of the Constitution. Article 192 of the Constitution and Section 123 of the County and Section 123 of the County Government Act provides that a devolved government may be suspended by the President due to internal conflicts, war, or exceptional circumstances. So all of them will automatically go for re-election if the President suspends the county. All the way from governor, all the way down to MCAs, all of them will go back to the ballot. And as things stand, it seems the people are with Kawira Mwangaza. So if we go for re-election, it's very much likely the governor will be re-elected and the MCAs will be sent home. That is how history usually has it. Anytime a leader faces adversity, for some reason, I don't understand why, the people begin to rally behind that leader. The assassinated American President J.F. Kennedy became more popular after he was shot in his vehicle. Ronald Reagan also became popular after his assassination attempt. The people kind of sympathize with the leaders. Mike Sonko was actually very popular after his impeachment and even during. Had we gone for a re-election in Nairobi, he would have been re-elected overwhelmingly. So if they go for re-election in Meru County, Kawira Mwangaza will pass with flying colors. But what I can assure you, that's not what she wants. She doesn't want to go for another election. No one wants to spend money, not Kawira Mwangaza, not the MCAs, and the president, he won't be spending money, but he will be spending time. He has to form a tribunal to look into whether he should suspend the county or not. Then they'll report back to him the very same way they're reporting back to him about this whole Cherera and the other saga. So now that the president sees that the threshold for him to suspend the county has been reached, and that is a strenuous activity, he'll just call the majority leader in the Senate and tell him, hey, just quash that impeachment, let them all go back to work, call them together, have a talk, let that be the end of it. So the trick Kawira Mwangaza has used is to put pressure on the president to suspend the county, and no president wants to do that. It's a lot of work. All of those people will go home for three months. In those three months, the government has to avail officers, like they did in Nairobi with the NMS. They have to avail an entire structure to run Meru County for three months in the absence of the MCAs and the governor. And then after that, IBC has to do another election. So it's just, it's not worth it. I think the president will cave and they won't impeach uh, Kawira Mwangaza. Then the second reason why I believe she might survive is that I'm seeing Azimio leaders tweeting support for Kawira Mwangaza. On Twitter, I've seen Ledama Olekina and Kaluma. In fact, let me just read you the tweets. Ledama Olekina is saying, What Mike Sonko's impeachment taught me is that it's never about the law. It's all about the Benjamins and political power. And he's not wrong. In this particular case, the MCAs are primarily impeaching her because she refused to release the Ward Development Fund. Then Honorable George Peter Kaluma is saying, What gross misconduct has Her Excellency Governor Kawira Mwangaza committed to deserve this fight by men barely three months after election. Men must accept that women too can be governor. Senate should dismiss this nonsense. That is George Peter Kaluma, an Azimio member of parliament. Then the third reason she might survive is because the senators are very angry. The speaker was just about to put them out of session. They can finally go on holiday with their families. They can finally rest, go do their own business ventures. But because of this impeachment, they now have to converge back in the Senate, and most of the senators are very bitter, actually. I even saw Aaron Cheriot complaining about it. This is what he said on Twitter, and I quote, Meru MCAs have decided there's no Christmas break for the Senate. Well, when duty calls, it must be responded to. We shall therefore hold a special sitting early next week to listen to the Meru matter and determine what's best for the great people of Meru. On top of that, the Kenya Kwanza government has suspended two MCAs from committees in the county assemblies. Those MCAs were elected on a UDA ticket. The first one is Simon Garuni and the other one is Faith Kinano. So already someone has let down the gauntlet 
on two MCAs who have been notorious in pushing this particular impeachment, despite Kenya Kwanza insisting that they don't want drama at this time. The Senate could be doing better things. The President could be focusing on other things. Now his hand is being forced to suspend an entire county, which has never happened in history. And the president will not want to be the first one to do it. It will look bad on his end. And the reason it will look bad on his end, it's not because the governor is from UDA. No, that's an independent governor. But the issue is the MCA's majority of them were elected on a UDA ticket. So it looks bad on the UDA brand and Kenya Kwanzaa as a whole. Then, of course, this impeachment of the governor has attracted the sympathy and the support of other women in power. I have seen Naisula Lesuda tweet out support for Governor Kawira Mwangaza. She's saying that they have thrown her under the bus too, too soon, and they ought to give her a chance. Now, the funny thing about all of this is that Kiraitu Muriungi, who is the former governor of Meru County, he wrote a book, and in that particular book, he talked about Kawira Mwangaza. And he did so with pinpoint accuracy. So much so that people are saying it is either he is a prophet or he is the one behind Governor Kawira Mwangaza's problems. Let me read you a small snippet of what he wrote in his book. So this is what Kiraitu wrote. I think he held no prisoners on this. He said, Kawira is a semi-illiterate who has no clue about politics. She thinks it is mere philanthropy and prayers. She neither has broad vision, teamwork, no planning for implementation skills. Despite all her claims to supernatural and divine powers, Kawira is a hoax. As they say, you can fool some people for some time, but you can't fool some people all the time. She is just a cunning drama village queen, using religion and TV screens to manipulate the common folk for her narrow political and economic benefits. All I know is that she has declared her interest to be governor of Meru. As Machiavelli said, human beings are not what they seem or pretend to be. Despite their public professions of Christian goodness, some politicians are just wicked. They are thugs and scoundrels who are just good talkers. Kawira is a self-proclaimed bishop, but in reality she is a hypocrite, deeply immersed in lies and deception of the people, especially the poor and the illiterate. Now, having read that, two things can be said to be true. The first is that Kiraitu Muriungi is a hater. <laughs> that commentary there was very brutal, and I think it amounts to hate, in my opinion. But the part where he got it right is that he said she lacks people skills. Unanimous impeachment shows a lack of people skills. This has never happened in this country. Mike Sonko was impeached, but some people voted for him. Some other MCAs actually tried to skip that particular impeachment in order to make sure there's no quorum. This is the first time that the entire county has agreed she needs to go home. So that is why people are saying that Kiraitu Muriungi might be the one behind all this. Because if you read that language and you look at how people are responding to Kawira in the county assembly, it looks like it's going hand in hand. And then this is the immediate former governor. So those words cannot be taken lightly. They do have an impact on the current sitting MCAs. And even in the Senate impeachment trial, I am sure someone is going to bring up that particular page in Governor Kiraitu's book. But according to me, according to all the indicators I've seen, Kenya Kwanza will rescue this particular governor because they don't have the luxury to suspend the entire county. But that's just my opinion, guys. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios.